Still waiting to hear. Good evening and welcome. We are going to continue with that hymn 100 and, well, no, 175 for me. It will be number 22 for you. 22 in your booklets. Looks like this. We will be singing the words out of the booklet to the tune of Standing on the Promises. I ask you to stand with me as we sing number 22, Going Forth to Conquer. Going forth to conquer in the Master's name. Marching forth together with our hearts aflame, telling in the byways that the Savior came, doing what the Savior said to do. Watch 
botch it there because if you're like me, you start singing Standing on the Promises when you get to the chorus. So I try and stick with the lyrics. Continuing on verse 2, Jesus said to teach of him. Jesus said to teach of him in every place. Jesus said to tell the lost of saving grace. Soon we'll stand to give account before his face. Then what Jesus said to do. Mark Swedberg to the platform if you'd lead us in a word of prayer. Let me just ask you, though, as uh, he makes his way, you can come on up here, brother, if you'd like to. That'd be great. Hey, uh, have you done what the master said to do? Have you told anybody today, yesterday, the gospel? Did anybody do that? Barbara did. Praise the Lord. Anybody else there? Anybody else? Bless my soul. Come on. I hope somebody else. You did as well. Amen, Stacy. Good, good. Listen, that's our responsibility. We have missionaries that are doing this all over the world, but we need to be doing it in our world. Amen. We really need to be doing that. So listen, all right, maybe you didn't get a chance, but I hardly believe you didn't get a chance. God gives us opportunities. We don't always capitalize on those opportunities, but I hope and pray that we'll do better even tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Mark Swedberg is going to lead us in prayer. He is not a newcomer to this church family. He might be new to some of you who are not familiar with our missionaries, but uh, we have supported this dear brother for many, many years. He and his wife and family, and I'm going to let us, uh, he's going to lead us in prayer, and then he's going to introduce his wife, Anita, and tell us about his family and ministry. That'd be great. Let's pray. <coughs> Father, we're so grateful uh, to be here this evening and to meditate and be challenged regarding the task of the Great Commission to take the Word of God to the world. Mm -hmm. We're thankful for those who came out to be challenged. We pray for our own hearts that we would also be challenged. We're so thankful for uh, Christ's death on the cross for us, that he uh, suffered so that we could have fellowship with you and be forgiven our sins and uh, be able to live eternally uh, with you in, in heaven someday. And we're so grateful for this, and uh, we pray that you would burden us mm -hmm. with our necessity of not keeping it to ourselves That's but right. sharing it with those who are around us pray that you would uh, be glorified by everything that is done this week mm -hmm. and we pray that you would receive our worship and our prayer this evening in christ's name amen amen amen, amen. you may be seated introduce your wife and family to us here. okay well my wife is my family anymore <laughs> anita uh, uh, we both grew up on the mission field, and she grew up in Dominican Republic, and I grew up in Brazil. We do have two children, but uh, they are out of the home. We're, we've been empty nesters for a few years now. Our son, John, uh, married Sarah Brown. Some of you know Sarah. She's uh, Dan Brown's youngest, and uh, they uh, live around here someplace. He's going to, <clears throat> to uh, Westminster Choir College, uh, working on a master of music degree and will graduate in May and uh, pray for them. They don't know what they're doing after that. So uh, they, uh, uh, they uh, have some major decisions to make. I think they might even show up one of these days, but I, uh, but I know that uh, John's in New York today with, a con with his choir giving a concert. So it's, it's hard to work it in. Our daughter Jennifer is uh, in uh, Troy, Michigan at this point, and she's engaged to be married to a, a missionary kid from Peru, and they'll be married at, in the end of, at the end of June. And uh, she's going to be going on for more education as well as her future husband. She's going to work on uh, 
uh, piano pedagogy and, and performance. And she's not quite sure yet where. They've, they're probably headed to the mission field. So uh, France, maybe. We'll see how the Lord leads. So pray for them. Anita and I, uh, uh, you'll get this later on in the week, but Anita and I have been on the field just over 25 years. We joined Baptist Missions in 1990, arrived in February of 93 uh, in Brazil. And we've been connected with Kendall Park yeah, I, I first came here when I was still in seminary back in the 80s. There used to be a round robin conference, and I was at the very first one. And uh, we uh, uh, were in Parsippany, and here Pastor uh, Dan was here. And then we came back several times later, and eventually Kendall Park took us on. And I can't remember when it w when it was, but it might be as as long ago as it's over 20 years, I'm sure. So we've, we've appreciated your support and your, your prayer for us. Uh, this year, uh, uh, July 9th, uh, will mark 50 years since uh, my family arrived in Brazil. On July 9th, we arrived, uh, I was five, and uh, we uh, have uh, enjoyed every minute of it. My folks are still alive and still very active on the mission field, though the mission has retired them. Uh, it hasn't changed anything. They're still, they're still working, and with my youngest brother, about five hours north and west of us uh, in the city of Sao Paulo. Well, we'll tell you more as the week goes on, but it's sure good to be back and good, good to see you again. Amen. How many remember those uh, round robin conferences? You remember, yep, 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 you've been here for a few years. You should remember those. That was uh, for many, many years. Okay, 12 and under. How old is Mr. Swedberg? He gave us the hint tonight. How old is Mr. Swedberg? Is this going to be an educated guess? <laughs> here, what do you think, Kayla? Are you sure? Are you questioning? Are you asking? Or are you telling me? Tell me, how old is he? Say it real, with definitive yes. Yes, he's 55. I'm going to guess that. Very good. You paid attention. How does she know that? How does she know that? Who else is under 12? How does she know that? Emma, how does she know that? Anybody know? Yes, Archie. Well, you should know numbers. You work with numbers all the time here. So, yes, well, he said that uh, this coming July, they've been on the field for 50 years, and he was five years old when he went there. So that was kind of interesting. That's great. Well, Mark and Anita will be presenting their mission field on Saturday evening after the international dinner. So I hope that you'll be back to hear all of them. Every night there's a different missionary. Sunday will be the, the we'll go through the cycle again with these guys. But tonight, uh, Dr. Tom Wolf will be our speaker. Tomorrow night will be Matthew Rose. Uh, Jose Santos will be here on Friday. Uh, Mark will be speaking Saturday. And then we'll uh, go through it all again on Sunday. So that's the plan. Well, we're going to sing another song here. Why don't we do that? Let's take our booklets and go to booklet number 24, page number 24. That would be great. All right, you guys are going to be doing a lot of watching and listening, so I'm going to ask that you keep standing with me when we sing. Number 24, to the tune of Face to Face. Even some of the lyrics match up for you. For those of the, that are really about, you know, the lyrics have to be the same. So you get a couple, couple of the uh, stanzas in there. Go ahead, brother. Face with Christ my Savior, face to face what will it be, when with rapture I behold Jesus Christ. Judgment seat. What a shame if that. 
at that meeting. I lay nothing at his feet. And on the last, face to face, what tragic moment when with sorrow. trivia you know that so here's here's the question here what is it that we will lay at the feet of our God uh, someday what is it that we'll lay at the feet of God someday you should know the answer to that that is crowns exactly what feet or what crown in particular will we lay at his feet in light of this song here what is the crown that we will lay at his feet in light of the song it is the crown of yes very good excellent and uh, really, I think Paul writes about that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 with regard to the souls that are saved. They are my joy and my, and my crown of rejoicing. And so, so uh, I hope that you have won people to Christ. And if you haven't, you still have time. The Lord hasn't come back. So go get a soul. Yet tonight, tomorrow, but get a soul. And then you'll have something to lay at the feet of our God. And that will be, uh, that'll be a wonderful day when we see him. I'm going to invite Matthew Rose to come and introduce his wife and family as well. All right, my name is Matthew Rose. I'm going to have my family stand up so you all can see them better. This is my wife, Rebecca, the tallest one. Okay, and then on this side, uh, my daughter, Deborah, and then Hannah, Esther, and Lydia. And we have one more, Priscilla, she's in the nursery. Deborah's seven, Hannah's six. Let's get this right. Esther is five, Lydia is three, and Priscilla is uh, approaching 10 months. So that's their ages. And for those of you who want to know, I'm 31, almost 32 at the end of the month, so <laughs> there it is. Um, but God has called us to the country of Kenya as church planting missionaries. So we're sent out of Grace Baptist Church in Hinesville, Georgia. We're serving with Worldwide New Testament Baptist Missions. So I want to thank you all for allowing us to come and be a part of your conference this year. Um, we didn't really do any phone calling here in New Jersey, and I didn't know your pastor at all. Um, but uh, he was one of those really exciting phone calls when a pastor actually calls you and asks you to come to be a part of their conference. So that was neat, and I appreciate him reaching out to us. But uh, we're looking forward to a wonderful week. Thank you all so much. Amen. And uh, Matthew will be presenting, let's see, he's doing tomorrow night, right? Yep, that's right. He's tomorrow night. I have the schedule right here. I should probably take a look at it. But he'll be presenting his field of Kenya. Uh, you and your wife were over there, took a survey trip. Yeah and uh got back and so we'll see some slides and some pictures uh, dr wolf has been to kenya as well so he might i don't know where we're gonna we're gonna travel the world with him uh, tonight and some on sunday i'm not sure what countries we're going to be stopping at but he's been quite a few i'm not sure if you've ever totaled up how many countries you've been in since uh, being with ipm but there's a good many you can do some thinking and you also have to tell us your age i don't know there's a pattern so just kidding just kidding you don't have to do that so <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah. All right. Well, hey, praise the Lord. Let's sing another song here. Let's take those booklets one more time. We're going to go to number 20, page number 20. I am a debtor. Number 20. All right. And again, I ask you stand with me. We will sing all three verses of this to the tune of He Leadeth Me. Stand with me as we sing I am a debtor. Christ loves them all.
song. Uh, pray for Jared's family. I think a few of them are under the weather, I believe. A couple of them. Uh, so far, so good for the last 12 hours. <laughs> the last 12 hours. Different story a couple days ago, I guess. Uh, but I do know that the Rose family has had their bout here this week as well. So they're on the mend as well. Tis the season, I guess. But it's always the season. You never know when it's coming our way. Well, it really is our privilege to have a former pastor back here in the pulpit with us again. Uh, Dr. Tom Wolf pastored this church from 1979 to 1985. He left here to go to a place called Bible Baptist in Westchester, Pennsylvania. I became the dean of a school over there, which I had the privilege of sitting under him uh, in those early years, 86 through 89. And so what a, what a privilege I had to get to know your pastor from a different perspective, though. And uh, really now to have him come back as a missionary, of course, he's been here before. This church has supported him. I think he was reminding me earlier, maybe 15 or 16 years, uh, we've, we've been with him uh, by way of his endeavor to really help others on the mission field get better educated with regard to the things of God's word. And so, brother, you come and introduce your family as well, <laughs> your wife and your kids, wherever they are. Uh, well, my wife is 11 days older than I am. So you pray for me because I just got myself in big trouble. <laughs> I'll try not to give you too many uh, hints uh, so that you can figure it all out. Maybe by the end of the conference you will have done so. Um, yeah, we were back, we were here uh, way back when. And our kids were very small at that time. Matthew and Joy. Joy turned three years old um, shortly after we came here. And then, uh, as your pastor said, <clears throat> we were here for a number of years. And uh, we thank the Lord for those years. We thank the Lord for Kendall Park Baptist Church and what God has done here to add to his church and to keep his church strong and going forward with momentum Amen. to serve the Lord and glorify his name, to exalt Christ. Um, I was thinking about the last song we just sang. It speaks about our debt. And a number of times in the book of Romans it talks about our debt. Um, Paul speaks about being a debtor both to the Greeks and to the, to the Jews and to everybody to declare the gospel. And he speaks about our debt not to live according to the flesh, but to live according to the spirit and others. So, very important truth. Uh, we pay our debt. Well, you know, it's a good thing to have a good credit rating. And if you've ever checked your credit rating, what you want to see on your credit rating, if you look at the details, is this little expression, pays as agreed. Pays as agreed. And uh, we're not paying for our salvation, but we are laying up treasure in heaven, and we are seeking to have crowns to lay at the Savior's feet. Um, little update on our kids. Um, Don and I are doing very well. Uh, we thank the Lord for good health. Uh, when we were here last time, we headed back over to Pennsylvania to see some friends, and it was at that time that Donna had a heart attack. And, uh, but all turned out well. <clears throat> they were able to uh, put in a couple of stents and within about another week or so, we were able to make our way home. Um, so uh, our kids are doing well. Matthew is uh, married and has seven kids. He pastors First Baptist Church in Westfield, New York, which is in far western New York, almost toward uh, the city of Erie. And uh, his oldest, is graduating from the United States Naval Academy this May. And so we're thrilled about his uh, direction. He has uh, requested the Marines, and they have given him that assignment. 
And then his younger brother, uh, he has also gone into the Marines already, and he'll be in Marines Reserve and be able to go on for some schooling and hopefully officer training after that. The other kids, well, they're still trying to figure it out. And uh, the youngest is uh, our daughters. Um, her name is Reagan. Joy has three kids, Emma, Will, and Reagan. And Reagan is six years old. So she keeps us hopping and happy as well. So we're thankful for the family God has given us and the years um, of development here and then beyond. So praise the Lord for all that. Uh, tonight, I want to take us to a few countries. Uh, we're going to start tonight in Africa. So we will go to Kenya a little bit. Uh, I will be going back to Kenya uh, this September. Uh, we started a Bible Institute over there. Probably shouldn't say too much about it now because you'll see the photos. But uh, I'll be going back in uh, the fall, the early fall, to uh, work with that school again and teach. And uh, we're thankful for what the Lord is doing all around the world. I'll be saying more about those things as we uh, do some of those travels. I'll then uh, show some more on Sunday morning uh, during the regular 11 o'clock service and as well as uh, bring the word at that service. And I'll do that a little bit later in this service as well. But uh, we thank the Lord for you, for your church, for your... Um, faithfulness to the Lord and your support, your gracious and generous support for us financially, of course, but also in your prayers and in your, uh, your investment and interest in what the Lord is doing and uh, how the Lord is, by his grace, using us in uh, these uh, regions beyond. So I think we'll go ahead and go to that, Jared, if you are ready. All right, that's warming up. That's us. That's actually us a few years ago. And uh, we do have prayer cards out on the table. And please stop by and see all the tables out there, the displays, and the, uh, the representation of these different ministries that we're seeing and hearing from uh, this week. This is now over in... West Africa and Ghana with the Solid Rock Baptist Bible College and Seminary. Uh, been going over there for over 10 years. A number of years ago, we started the Master of Ministry program there. Uh, this was our first group. And just about all of them have now graduated. But I'm getting over there about every other year. I'll be going back there in... Um, August this year. So I'll go over to Ghana in August and then Kenya in September. These are men who are serving the Lord. Most of them are pastors, serving as pastors in different towns and villages in Ghana and uh, getting further education and training for the ministry. They've been just wonderful students, hardworking, uh, they had to fulfill some very demanding uh, criteria for graduation, and uh, they did a very good job at it. They gave me the, uh, the best hat to wear. <laughs> this is over... Uh, in uh, Côte d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast, French-speaking country, and of course, uh, indigenous dialects as well, but with a men's conference, mostly preachers and other church leaders coming to 
study together for a modular seminar and then also teaching in another week for the Bible College there. The Bible College there in Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast, is uh, somewhat decentralized, holding different modulars in different places around the country to uh, help the students uh, get some training. Uh, there we were on an island not too far outside the capital city of Abidjan and going to one of the new churches that's been planted on that island in a village. And uh, they were gathering together that day for baptism service in the river. Most of the folks with the white shirts on, those were the new believers, almost all adults, and uh, all but then baptized uh, down in the river on that day. Some of them are uh, one to Christ out of Islam. Another one of the churches, kind of north central in uh, Ivory Coast. I remember that day because they gave me a wonderful love gift. They gave me uh, two chickens and a baby goat. And it was all delicious. No, I didn't bring it. I can't bring it back into the States, so we had to eat it all there. <laughs> and then another time there again with uh, men who are, these are men who are serving as pastors and um, being very faithful to the Lord in spite of a lot of opposition that they do face there from time to time. It's not the most stable government. And when things do become unstable on the verge of civil war, then they do face more persecution from the jihadist. And there with the Bible College as well, teaching a modular course. I'm hoping to get back there next year. This is another one of the churches started there in, in Ivory Coast. Now we're going to head to uh, another neighboring country there in West Africa. This is Liberia. And this is one of my favorite places to go. Uh, been going there since about 2007. And that was shortly after the hostilities ended uh, within the country. They had been through many years of civil war, uh, a lot of bloodshed, a lot of destruction uh, within the country, which once was quite a prosperous African nation. But that, that's a gas station, by the way. That's, uh, that's gasoline. Now, they have done better now. They have gotten some more electricity in, and, and now they actually have some pumps. But you'll still see that kind of uh, gasoline station, filling station, they call them. I remember them being called filling stations way back when, but I'm not going to tell you when because then you might guess how old I am. <laughs> the Bible College there has uh, been going strong for a number of years and uh, reaching out into some of the more remote villages. Uh, this church had been greatly damaged during the Civil War. This was, this was not long after that. People told me many horrific stories about what they went through. And as different factions would come in and begin to slaughter people, they would have to run into the bush or into the jungle to escape for their lives and with their children. It was a very difficult time. But God is doing a lot there. And uh, with churches being started, uh, we go up into kind of the north eastern part of the country. These are all churches that have been started uh, with and by students from the Bible College, which we've developed. Our missionary there is Edwin Bohr. He's standing over there on the far right-hand side. For the international dinner, we uh, brought along some of our African attire, you know, shirts and things like that. Also, some other things from a few other countries. 
So uh, we'll have those things available if you want to uh, try them out. We have a variety of sizes. This is also in Liberia again, and uh, great times of fellowship, leadership conferences, and, and modular courses in the Bible Institute. But we always have a big attendance because they love the word and they love to come together for fellowship. They enjoy the food, they enjoy the fellowship, and they enjoy the word. This was my uh, class about a year and a half ago there in Ganta, Liberia, at the uh, Great Commission Fundamental Baptist Bible College and Seminary. And this is more recent as well. This was a time when we went out to another village called Saklepea. And our missionary's son is actually the church planter out there. And we drove out. Uh, it, was a, it was the rainy season, so it took us a long time to get through all the mud. But we got there, and this was uh, the group of people. This was not on a Sunday. This was, uh, I think, a Friday or Saturday. And, but the people that could come together, uh, they, they came uh, marching out and singing and waving the palms and welcoming us as we drove up. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful time and experience of fellowship with these believers. Seeing the fruit of souls being saved, more places reached, more people saved, more churches being started, what we call multiplication. Multiplication of disciples and a multiplication of churches here in Liberia. And they just really have the joy of the Lord. This building is now further complete. It has a roof on it now, and I think they are using it for their services. When I was there, we met in a little tent structure. Basically, they had canvases left over from different aid organizations. I think USAID, and we, we'll see the UN uh, trademark on, on a lot of these different uh, fabrics that they, they still use there for different purposes. They make use of everything. When they slaughter a pig, they eat it all but the squeal. Okay, now we are going to head over to Kenya, which is East Africa. And right here is the, uh, the line for the equator. You can see that, you can see we're at a pretty high altitude, 77, over 7,700 feet above sea level. So it was kind of a high and dry climate. It was very pleasant. This is in the uh, city of Niahururu, which is uh, northwest of Nairobi. And uh, church planting taking place there. And we had started a Bible college there about three years ago. I was there a year ago at this time. I'll be going back, as I said before, in the month of September. On one of our trips, we did get out to one of the um, natural areas and saw a lot of wildlife in the wild. A few elephants. You can see a few of the babies there, kids. See the kids? See the babies? The mothers were very protective of those babies. And if you got too close, they would, uh, they would honk at you flare their ears. They were good mommies. I was able to catch these zebras. They uh, scurried around the, the bush there. I like zebras. Lions like zebras too, by the way. <laughs> I uh, learned that while I was over there. They like missionaries and they like zebras. And this is uh, one group of our classes over there in Kenya. And of course, everybody loves lunchtime. And one of the churches that's been started. I call this uh, Equator Baptist Church because by my reckoning, as we drove there, 
we must have been almost immediately on the equator. And the uh, pastor standing in the back, he's also one of our students. So the Lord is uh, working and bringing forth fruit to his glory. And that fruit abounds to your accounts as well. This is over in Lebanon, and I know you have an interest and an investment, uh, a good investment in Lebanon with the work there of Raymond Abu Mikhail and also uh, uh, Haytham Nizar Nouri. And uh, <clears throat> Don has been over there with me. In fact, you might not recognize Don in that photo, but you see Don on the lower right hand corner? That's her shoulder. That's her shoulder, and that's how we get these kind of pictures. I say, okay, stand there and look at me, and I'm going to take a picture, and I just kind of move the camera just a little bit, and uh, look at that kid, though. That, that's pretty typical, isn't it? I'm tired. I'm bored. But uh, that's in Lebanon. That's right along the coast of the Mediterranean. You can see a little bit of that in the background, a place where a lot of people were out walking. Of course, Lebanon still is a hot spot <clears throat> in some ways, in many ways. <coughs> uh, this is the emblem of Hezbollah. This is down in the southern part, but actually they're throughout the country. We've gone down to the southern part a number of times. There's some churches being started uh, down there in the southern part, which is basically Hezbollah territory. There you can see kind of a mix of... Uh, of uh, cultures and, and uh, a mix of something else too because you've got Hezbollah banner there and their uh, main leaders and then you can see the KFC sign in the background. You see that? <laughs> Kentucky Fried Chicken. Uh, they seem to like the colonel. So I was preaching in Arabic there of course, it sounded more like Raymond, who's uh, translating for me. And Donna was also preaching in Arabic. Well, she wasn't preaching, but she was talking to the ladies. They really liked her. And then my last time there was uh, just a little over, well, two years ago now, I guess. And uh, we had a men's, <clears throat> a men's conference up at uh, the camp facility. I don't know if you've seen some of the photos of that uh, newer facility further up the mountain. Uh, we had a wonderful time there. See the young man standing in the back next to, well, I'm in the center. The guy, young man holding up the Bible. He's holding up an Arabic Bible there. He was a brand new believer. And some of these men also, and he, he was still in the Lebanese army, but he was uh, being discharged. He, was, he had served his time. And... Uh, but some of these men are also Syrian because right now in Lebanon, because of the conflict in Syria, there are about one million uh, refugees from Syria in Lebanon. Now that's for a country of three million people to add another million, you can imagine that puts a lot of stress on the country and the economy and, and everything else. But it also gives a great open door for reaching people with the gospel. And I'd say about one third of these men were Syrian, maybe one fourth of them were Syrian who had been reached with the gospel. And some of them, that's Raymond sitting right in the center there. And some of them <coughs> were saved through this ministry to the Syrian children. Uh, they have this ministry ongoing, still going on. Um, giving, giving the word, giving the gospel, and, and giving some other training for reading and such things to, uh, to educate these, these kids, these Syrian kids uh, who are there as refugees with their families. So it's a great outreach. God is really blessing the ministry there. And, of course, they still have the uh, seminary, which is, for the most part, online. That way they're able to uh, reach out with the seminary courses to Arab men 
who are in more difficult areas such as Saudi Arabia. Now we're going to switch continents and go down to South America. This is in uh, southern Peru on the outskirts of the city of Arequipa, which you can see off in the distance with the volcano Misty there dominating the, uh, the background. Misty rises to about 19,000 feet. Here we are, we're now back in another part of southern Peru, back more into the mountains, but also more volcanoes. That's another volcano, and you can basically see just a little bit of ash and steam coming out of that volcano. That's called Ubinas. That's actually about 20,000 feet up. Here we're at about a 13,000 foot elevation. We were reaching villages and uh, towns through this valley and canyon, beautiful area, very interesting from a geology standpoint, but there's a lot of people back here who have never been reached with the gospel. And so our Bible school there, headquartered in Arequipa, comes back here about, about every month to reach people and try to start uh, small fellowships of people. The goal is to have a student graduate and go back here and be more or less a circuit pastor for these uh, groups of believers in the, the smaller villages of this valley. I've had the opportunity to go back into that part several times on my trips to southern Peru. Okay, what happened here? I'm, just, I'm stalled. Go ahead and advance. Let me... Uh, nope. Okay. Well, this is back in that same valley. You can see the kind of road that we're on. That's our vehicle off in the distance, and we had to back up so that these... Uh, construction vehicles could get through. But meanwhile, while we were back there, we were having evangelistic services at uh, bus stations and town plazas, um, holding forth the word. There are some believers there as well who are uh, hosting groups of believers in their homes. This couple here, they sang a beautiful song in Quechua, which is an indigenous language in uh, that region of Peru. And uh, it was just beautiful to hear them sing and give testimony to the Lord Jesus Christ. So more fruit for your glory, for the Lord's glory and for your account. Uh, this is again one of my more recent times there. One of the things I've noticed about this ministry in Arequipa is the very encouraging involvement of young adults in the outreach with the gospel to not only the people in Arequipa, <clears throat> but also going back into places like Ubinas. This is really hard territory. And uh, you, know, you don't have facilities back there. And they, they, go, they go out and they, they have a sense of adventure, but a sense of great purpose to go with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and there's, there's something happening there. And I continue to think about it and uh, how, how with the right leadership and with the right uh, outreach, these young people, they have a lot of fun together, but they are very dedicated to getting the word out. Um, and they don't mind having me tag along. So the one young man said, I'm kind of like his grandfather. I was highly insulted. <laughs> Actually, uh, I have a grandson almost his age. So, And again, we have uh, kind of an open church uh, Bible conference here, but also teaching, of course, for those that are in the, 
Institute, kind of the everybody comes. One of the churches that's been started there on the uh, outskirts, growing metropolitan area of Arequipa, Peru. And then reaching down into some of the newer towns uh, where there's now mining and more agriculture taking place. Here's these young people again serving the Lord. This is in a little building still, as you can see, very much under construction. Uh, but where now a church has started in the town of Mahes. And then also in Peru to the Amazon uh, jungle of Peru. Um, this is more of a curiosity photo. So I'll let you look at that for a moment and figure out what you're looking at. We'll have a little time for question and answer here afterwards. Well, with the Bible Institute there, Donna's been with me there and uh, had a missions conference there also down in the town of Pavos. Donna taught the ladies there in that missions conference. It was an opportunity, opportunity for me to take my wife on a cruise. <laughs> and that's the kitchen. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a typical kitchen, and that's a typical lunch. How about that? You should have seen it when I finished it. So that's, uh, some of you will remember uh, the Dan Smith family. This is Iquitos, Peru, and uh, Dan Smith, we, we supported him when I was the pastor here, and I'm sure the church continued to do so for many years, but um, he, he told us how, how he would remind people about the name of the city, Iquitos. He would say, Iquitos. And I guess he would take his shoes and socks off to do that. Too. Uh, I'm not going to do that, so don't worry. But uh, more going on there, yeah. And now the Dominican Republic, Republica Dominicana, um, Churches being started here, uh, great opportunities for getting the gospel out. The two men over on the right-hand side are a couple of our key leaders with the Bible seminary that we began there about 10 years ago now, and it's been going very strong and uh, good results, good fruit to the glory of God. You can see Don has been down there with me a couple of times. This was at a kind of an outdoor uh, service, a baptism service. There were about 10 young adults baptized in the stream after time of fellowship and praise. So God is working. God's working around the world, and uh, we're seeing the Lord do great and mighty things. Um, you are involved. You are invested. Thank you so much for your part in holding forth the word of life. Question and answer. Any questions? Yes. Pardon me? How big is Ivory Coast? Um, Ivory Coast, I'm trying to think of how to compare it to like a state. The population, I'm not sure. It's, a, it's a maybe 20 million, but uh, size-wise, I'll, I'll, I could look it up, you know. The reason why I'm asking is because I know mm -hmm. another missionary that he used to be there for 30 years. Yeah. And I don't know if you ever run into any other missionaries, but does Jeffrey Bassett ring a bell? Uh, no, I don't know that name. I don't know that name. But I do know a few others, Cuthbertsons and a couple of others. But yeah, it's a big country. It's uh, it's bigger it's bigger than Liberia, and Liberia is about the size of Ohio, in terms of square miles. Other questions? Yes. 
What was that question again, honey? What kind of animals did I see? Well, are you talking about on my plate? <laughs> I've seen anaconda, anaconda, crocodile, zebra, giraffe, lion, um, rhinoceros, and some others. Some big animals. Uh, Cape what they call Cape Buffalo. They're very big and they can also be very mean, especially the males. <clears throat> yes? So as a missionary on a field, when you go to the village of a person, is, is your perspective of a person different than the way you would have explained to this when you found it back in 1850? Okay, the question is, how is, how is it different there um, to, for them to live out their Christianity? You know, I, I just came back from the country of Myanmar, Burma. And so I'm going I'm to use that as an example. <clears throat> their, their basic Christianity is very simple. The Bible is the word of God. They believe what the Bible says. And they obey it. And they, they have joy in worship and in giving. When I was in Liberia the very first time, one of the first things I noticed, um, and, and I've seen this in other places, other countries as well, when they do the offering, they sing. They sing. And they might even sway a little bit because right? they're happy. God loves a cheerful giver. So that's what I see. Are you recommending we try that on Sunday? <laughs> well, you're the pastor. That's up to you. All right. Yes, sir. The Bible, how do you make the Bible in their language? Well, right now, in, it, the Bible is available in most of the primary languages. That, uh, that you will find in different countries. Now, not necessarily in every language or every dialect, but now you do find at least some version of the scriptures in uh, just about every major language. Now, now that, work is, that work continues. In fact, I was just with some Bible translators in Burma who are correcting some of the earlier translations that were not quite properly done with the right text. So they are, they are in the process of producing something that will be better in that, in that language. But like, for example, in Myanmar, there's many languages. There's Burmese, but there are many other dialects and many other languages that are completely different languages. But most people, most people where I go, they, they are at least bilingual, if not three or four languages, and able to function in those languages. Yes? Uh, that, in Dobro. Yeah. Well, and, and the men that work with that ministry, they are, one is in Tema, and another one is in Accra, and uh, the exact name of the other one I, escapes me, but all in that general Accra area. These are good questions. Animals, people, yes. Good. Uh, how much time do I spend and what's my primary focus? Uh, I will usually be in a country for two weeks, maybe sometimes longer. And uh, depending on the country and the situation and the amount of travel necessary within the country, but generally about two weeks. What I am doing now 
is I'm teaching modular courses. We teach a full course, maybe two courses, in condensed time, putting all the classes into a week's time or two weeks' time. Um, for example, back in the fall, I was in the Philippines on Mindanao, and I was there for a full two weeks and taught two courses. Also, what I'm doing, because of my background in directing a seminary, I'm helping them develop their curriculum, helping them to establish good academic um, standards so that the teaching and training that people get is uh, of high quality. Um, and when I'm, when I'm in a location, I'm working with one of our missionaries, a Kenyan, a, a Ghanaian, uh, up in the Chin State area of Myanmar. I'm working with our missionaries. I'm not there on my own. I'm not just barging in. I'm, I'm working with our missionaries uh, in those different places down in Arequipa, Peru, in the Amazon, uh, wherever I go. So I'm always uh, laboring together with those who are already there and serving and, and heading up, for example, the seminary, but also heading up um, outreach with the gospel to other towns, villages, and uh, seeing churches get started, more people reached. Yes? Well, they, uh, they love it when we come and teach, and they, they love the, the level of teaching that we can bring. They, uh, they want the, uh, the input on how to run a school, you know, because they, they don't necessarily have that background. But I can kind of work them through the, uh, the logistics and the academics and the administrative aspects of all that. Um, that's one way God has gifted me to help them get a handle on that. And then when I go back, we continue to work on things and refine things. But one of the things I enjoy the most, I mean, I enjoy the teaching. I enjoy the working with the academics and things like that. But I love getting out into the country. I love getting to the villages. I love getting out where the people are <clears throat> and preaching the gospel and fellowshipping with them. And uh, seeing, seeing what is happening in the regions beyond. Uh, and I can tell you God is doing a lot. God is, God is still visiting people to take out of uh, the world people for his namesake. And that's, that is what he's doing. And we want to see more of that here, don't, don't we? we? We want to be part of that. We want to... I want to be part of what God's doing around the world. Okay. Pastor. Amen. All right. We are going to take a break here. Let's see. Are you guys still awake? You know, okay. Good to go. We're going to invite the Matthews, though. They got a bunch of kids and all kinds of stuff. So if they are up for it, we love to have some special music. I believe they are going to sing the song in place of Christ in you, the hope of glory. God bless you as you do. The debt that we owe, never comprehend such grace. For as Jesus paid the price for our sins, he died to take our place. But he rose from the grave, glorious victory, and ascended to his Father's throne. 
trust him as Savior and Lord, he makes our hearts his home. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Miracle from God above. Christ in us, the hope of glory. here. Anybody know what the theme is? And it is all at one time. Right. Okay, the missionaries know that. Praise the Lord. I'm, I hope Kendall Park knows that as well. Uh, Matthew, Rebecca, let's see. Have you sung that song before you came here? I mean, you guys got that song just for us. That is that. I'm really blessed by that. I, I know they forwarded that on to us here a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I wasn't sure if that was a standby. But uh, you learned that for us and uh, blessed our hearts with it. Thank you so much for us, uh, the ministry. That's, that was excellent. And, and then they've been battling a few things, colds and flus and all kinds of stuff. And here they are still singing. Praise the Lord. Appreciate your ministry. Thank you. All right. It's uh, getting a little late, so we're going to dismiss our youngsters. But we're going to try to keep this moving here in the next maybe 20 minutes or so or so. Whatever, brother. Okay. So uh, Swedbergs are going to be our children's church workers tonight here. Appreciate that. He's going to teach them a song. Uh, in Portuguese, uh, that will be a blessing, so challenge your kids when they get back tonight to sing it for you. That would be great, but kids 12 and under can head downstairs. Brother Tom, you come and open up the word and show us here tonight. God yep. bless you. Amen. All right, well, we are going to go to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, which is where we find the theme for our missions conference. I will uh, show some more of the world and what the Lord is doing in the world uh, on Sunday. We only went about halfway through. Colossians chapter 1. <clears throat> the theme for the conference is found in verse 27 says, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. <clears throat> Chapter 1, verse 27. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Man, there's a lot in that. There's a... A lot of truth packed into that simple, profound, yet very clear statement. Christ in you. 
the hope of glory. In verses 24 through 25, Paul speaks about his motivation for suffering. How it was that he could face suffering and still be joyful. He says, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind in the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation or the stewardship of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. He was motivated by his privilege to serve the Lord. And he says in verse 24, for his body's sake, for the sake of the body of Christ, he was motivated. I think he had an understanding of the importance of the church, the church which is his body. He was also motivated here for his ministry, for even suffering by the word of God. He says in verse 25, to fulfill the word of God. I personally believe Paul had a very clear understanding that he was involved in the completing work of God to fulfill, to complete the scriptures. He had an understanding of what was going on in his day with the writing of these books, these New Testament volumes, epistles, gospels, and others. So there was a motivation on his part that caused him to rejoice even in the midst of suffering. Verses 24 and 25. And in verses 26 and 27, he emphasizes this mystery. Not something mysterious, but something revealed, something that God has now made known that he wants his people to know. He says, even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. Now. And that includes now. This is manifest to his people, to his saints, to those of us saved by the grace of God. He says in verse 27 that God wants us to know this, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery, this revealed truth among the Gentiles which is, and then he defines it for us, he says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. He goes on in verses 28 and 29, and he talks about his ministry of the word, his preaching and teaching, whom we preach, verse 28, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Paul made these kind of statements in other places as well. Ephesians chapter 3, 1 Corinthians 15. He labored hard in the ministry. And it was here, focusing upon this, this truth, this mystery which God has revealed, Christ is. In you, the hope of glory. Now we have a few minutes tonight, and I just want to uh, point out three things about this very quickly. I think I will spend more time on the last. But first of all, this statement of Christ in you, the hope of glory, this declares our perfect acceptance before God in Jesus Christ. Uh, we stand before God, we are accepted before God, not because of our righteousness, but because of His. Scripture says that He was made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. So that when we are found by God, we will not stand in our own righteousness, but in the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Jesus Christ. 
Christ in you, the hope of glory, speaks of your perfect acceptance in the sight and presence of God for all eternity. There's a second thing that it brings out. Christ in you, the hope of glory. It declares our personal assurance. Turn to Romans chapter 8 just for a moment. Romans chapter 8 is a stirring testimony, a stirring portion of the book of Romans here that speaks about assurance based upon the security of our salvation in God's grace found in Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 8, toward the end of the chapter, beginning in verse 31, in verses 31 to 32, we have the assurance of God's free gifts. Verse 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? What's the answer to that? No one. Nothing can ever gain the victory over us because God is for us. Verse 32, he that spared not, his own son, spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So there is the assurance here of God's free gifts. In verses 33 through 34, there's the assurance of God's full justification of those who have been justified by faith in his son. It's been a major theme of the book of Romans up to this point. Justification by faith. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Romans 5, verse 1. And here he says in uh, verse 33, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. If you are saved, it is God who has justified you. He has declared you righteous in his sight, not because you're righteous, but because you're in Christ, and Christ is in you, the hope of glory. The full expectation of someday being in the glory of heaven. Verse 34, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Here we have the assurance of God's full justification. In verses 35 through verse 37, we have the full assurance of God's final victory. says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? The Bible says over in 2 Timothy that all who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Now we suffer persecution to different degrees depending on where we're at, who's against us, who's giving opposition, I understand that. But what will separate you from the love of Christ? Verse 36, as it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. There is this Assurance of God's final victory for those who are in Christ, and Christ is in them. And then there is the full assurance of God's forever love in verses 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither life, neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Christ in you, the full expectation of glory. 
It declares our perfect acceptance with God. It declares our personal assurance of this salvation, this great salvation, by his grace. But number three, it also declares our powerful announcement. Notice, once again, in verse 27, he says, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery. Now, pause with me for a moment. I need to get into a little teaching mode here. The first part of verse 27 looks back at his saints. All right? If you are here saved by the grace of God, that would be you. That's me. God would make known to you and to me, his saints, what is the riches of the glory of this mystery. But then it says, among the Gentiles. That seems to take it out broader. This is talking about an announcement. Not only our acceptance and not only our assurance, but also our announcement. This is what we announce. Here and in Peru and in Kenya, in Brazil, wherever we go, this is the announcement. Christ in you, the hope of glory, is Christ in you. Do you want the hope of glory? That's our announcement. We are announcing, he says in verse 28, Christ. It's a different word than what we often find for the term preach here. It has the idea of making an announcement. In verse 28, whom we announce, whom we preach. One of my uh, fond memories, I have a lot of them, from my days here at Kendall Park back in the early 80s, when I was a much younger man, I'm going to tell you how young, was during one service. I remember this particular service, and uh, I don't know if Mrs. Mundy will remember this or if the Cushes will remember this. I see Ted back there. I don't know if you'll remember this, but I remember it. And we were having a Sunday morning service. Typical Sunday morning service. Had the bulletin and the program and, you know, this happens, then this happens, then this happens. And I got up and I started giving the announcements. And somehow I got off track. And I said, well, our announcement here this morning is the gospel of Jesus Christ. (laughs) And I remember that. It was right before the offering. That's one reason I remember it. So I started preaching the gospel. Meanwhile, some of you will remember, Andy Schmidt. Andy Schmidt was an, uh, an usher that morning, and he was standing back there, and he's holding up the plate. (laughs) <laughs> and, and Andy was also our treasurer, I think, at the time. So he's very interested in making sure we have that offering. And I said, that's okay. We will still have an offering, but just sit down. We're going to announce the gospel here this morning. And uh, so we got a little off our program and uh, I think let the Spirit of God control that. Um, and it made a memorable time for me, at least, of um, when God was blessing his word. This is our announcement. Christ in you. We announce Christ. He came. He lived. He served. He he sought and he saved sinners. He died on the cross. He was raised from the dead for our justification. He ascended to glory. He's coming again. And he's able to save anyone, anywhere, who will come to God through him by faith. 
but it's got to be him. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes unto the Father but by me. And when he talked about that, we won't take the time to look. He also talked about I in you and you in me. That was something that they had not heard before. It was just getting revealed to them, his disciples. Here we are almost 2,000 years later, and it's still true. Christ in you, that's your hope of glory. So that means you are accepted before God. That means you can have full assurance, personal assurance, of heaven as your home, that when he shall appear, we shall appear with him in glory. It says that in this book, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 4. But it's also our announcement. It's what we take out from here tonight and as we go out into the highways and byways tomorrow, as we encounter friends and neighbors and coworkers and people we see from time to time who need Christ in them. And this is our message. May God help us to fulfill this dispensation that God has given to us, this stewardship of the gospel, so that we may be able to give an account and be found faithful as stewards of this message, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And tonight, if anyone here, even on a Wednesday night, first night of a missions conference, if you're, if you're in need of Christ coming into you, then you need to receive him. Colossians chapter 2 says, verse 6, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus, so walk ye in him. Now that's a challenge for the believer. Walk by faith. How did you receive Jesus Christ? You received him by faith, by putting your faith and trust in him and who he is and what he did on the cross and that God raised him from the dead. That's how you received Christ. That's how you need to walk. That's how you need to go out and witness and walk tonight and tomorrow, each day this week until Jesus comes. But it might be that some would need to receive him. Scripture says, as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the children of God, even to them that believe on his name. If that's your need tonight, won't you come and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior? You'll never be sorry if you take care of that tonight. Pastor Brown? Amen. I believe there's a reoccurring theme here tonight. Of course, you can't hardly deny that from all these missionary songs that we are singing out of this booklet all have that thought in mind, but I just want to remind you what we already sang here tonight. We started with going forth to conquer, but the chorus was going, telling, doing what Jesus said to do together. Going, telling, we're doing what the Savior said to do. So we have a responsibility to go, go with the gospel. We sang that already, and we're reminded of that truth. We sang number uh, 24 where we talked about having something to lay at the feet of our, of our Savior, of our God someday, and that certainly, I believe, implies souls by way of the context of the song. And then number 20, we sang, I'm a debtor to the world, the gospel banners, the gospel banners be unfurled. And you're going to get more of that tomorrow night, but I would hope and pray that you and I would be about the work that God has called us to do this week. And not limit it to just a missions conference week, but really to every, every day of our life. And I hope and pray that the Lord will use this conference really to stir us anew and afresh to, to do the work he's called us to do. Our missionaries are already doing that. 
We're grateful for that, but we need to be doing our part as well. We're going to take our hymn books and turn to hymn number 421 as we close uh, this uh, portion of our service, uh, the evening service here tonight, 421. It's one that it's easy for me to fall back on. I love the song, Go Tell the Untold Millions. And uh, there are a lot of folks that need to hear. And I would hope and pray that uh, God will use you and I to, to certainly share that word with folks around us tomorrow. So would to God we come back tomorrow night. And I think there was maybe one or two hands tonight that were raised saying that you shared the gospel today or maybe yesterday. Uh, maybe tomorrow night we ought to have a half a dozen or a dozen. Amen. I pray that we'll be out and about doing the work that God has called us to do. 421, when you found it, we'll just sing two stanzas of this. Two books. I want to personally thank you for joining us for our service today and the message that we just heard from God's Word. Here at Kendall Park Baptist Church, there's something for everyone. There's Sunday school classes for all ages, youth, teen, and young adult ministries with exciting activities and lessons that will draw you closer to Jesus Christ and a warm and welcoming congregation that loves people and loves the Lord. So while we're thankful that you've taken the time to view our service today, we hope that you won't stop there. Come by for one of our services on Sundays or Wednesday nights and see for yourself what makes this church truly special. Thank you again for joining us, and we hope to see you soon here at Kendall Park Baptist Church.